My name is Corey Ferguson. I've been tattooing for 14 years. Okay, and where are you tattooing? Right in the crease between the palm and the finger. Okay, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> what um, you tattoo in Toronto? Yeah, Canada. just outside of Toronto. Um, okay. A little suburb of Toronto called Oakville. Awesome. So not too far, about 20, 25 minutes from downtown Toronto. Okay. And what's the name of your studio? And the shop is called Good Point Tattoos. Okay. So I guess things things that uh, interest me particularly about your work is um, how expansive it is even though it's in a certain kind of um, style so where do you get where do you find most of your inspiration to do these types of um, patterns and um, dot works and repetitive things um. I mean, obviously, a certain amount of the inspiration comes from the client if they have, you know, a certain request or whatever. Um, like this weekend here, I did a lot of stuff that I, you know, don't normally do, but it was just on the client's sort of wishes. Um, did like a bunch of crystals and stuff the other day, which I've never done before. Today I did like a geeky kind of themed sleeve with binary code and uh, circuit boards and stuff. Which, you know, I was totally into, but it's not totally my normal thing either, so... Some of it comes from the client. Um, well, when I first started doing it, I would get a lot of this, the patterns out of books. Like, out of, uh, like, Dover's copyright-free design books. Mm -hmm. All that kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah, a lot of the patterns were coming out of those. But nowadays I'm making more of my own patterns on the computer and stuff like that, so I don't have to rely on the same patterns, because... Everyone ends up tattooing those same patterns, you know, all the dot work tattooers seem like they were tattooing the same patterns. Right. So now I'm, you know, basically making my own, so, so that's where a lot of it's coming from now. Um, I'm kind of looking for clients that will, like, give me free reign so I can tattoo that stuff. Kind okay. of. So I'm doing le a little bit less of, like, you know, their idea of what they want to see done in dots is more like uh, I'm getting a little bit more of just my own sort of stuff. And so when you turn to your computer program and you start to um, hash out a new um, pattern, yep. are you seeing it before you're making it or, it or are you kind of finding your way through it like, a, like it, it's unfolding for itself or are you like, I have this in my mind, I'm going to go and make this? No, it's more, it more happens you know, it sounds strange to say, but organically, even though it's on the computer. Um, a lot of the programs, that you'll, you'll like uh, upload some sort of design or something, some sort of image, and then uh, it'll start tweaking it and, and creating, you know, different patterns out of it, depending on how you, you know, pull it or turn it or whatever. It's con like a kaleidoscope, basically. So, so from there I play around, I'll just, I'll keep pulling it around and twisting it and, and whatever, altering it until I see something that I think is usable, or something that I could like, oh, I could, I could dot that out a cool way, or until I see something that I think I could tattoo. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I guess that's probably a lot of it is like, I see somewhere where there's room for like a gradation or some sort of, you know, something that's real eye catching. You see something that's like, oh, cool, cool. That's like, just something catches your eye, it's like, Something like that. So, and then once I get that, I'll, you know, screenshot that or save that, that tile or whatever. And so, not to belabor that specific aspect of your creative process, but mm -hmm. do you think that, um, or do you, do you turn to the sacred side of it at times, or the symbolic side of it, or are you strict? Are you more ornamental? And kind of not so much concerned with the uh, ancient uh, kind of art of it. Yeah, I'd say I'm, I'm almost entirely ornamental. I do enjoy like, you know, good luck symbols as much as the next tattooer and stuff. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of things like that. Um, Sorry. Yeah, a limited amount of like, yeah, you know, Buddhist symbols, you know, a little bit of like the ohm is in there sometimes or the, 
you know, the swastika design and stuff, but beyond that, yeah, it's it's pretty much ornamental. It's okay. not a big like uh, big like sacred spiritual thing to me. Mm -hmm. Not any more than tattooing itself is in general for anyone that does it. Yeah, that's not my my sort of vibe. Okay. And and where I know you you uh, make some really nice portraits. Um, where does that fit into to your current body of work? Are you? Um, it doesn't really. I've kind of phased that out for the most part. Okay. So um, I, I used to do them earlier on, um, but no, I, I don't even like people knowing that I can do them. I prefer to just like stick to this now. Yeah. Cool. So occasionally, people that have known me for a long time or who have gotten tattooed me by me for a long time will. I'll do a portrait on them because they know I can do it and blah, blah, blah. But other than that, I, could, I really downplay it because I'm not really interested in doing it that much. Right. Yeah. And one, because I, I love what I'm doing now. I'm just having so much fun with this. Like, this is this is my thing. And two, I don't know. I kind of feel like uh, if I'm not doing portraits all the time, that I shouldn't really be doing them at all, you know? Because uh -huh. they're, they're only going to be so good if you're doing, you know, six or seven a year. So I feel like... I was gonna do them I, I should do them more seriously so I'm just not not interested enough to do them seriously so I'm trying to phase them out so on a somewhat technical aspect I don't know if this makes you feel uncomfortable but do you feel that um, what you're doing now the style that you do now um, pushed you to using certain equipment do you feel that you've changed changed up your setups or what you use and what you turn to to execute these types of tattoos? Um, I, don't, I don't think it was the style exactly. I think it's, it's more like the times. Um, I don't know, this is a weird era where there's new shit coming out constantly. You know, every once or twice a year there's some new machine that everyone's using and they're not using the machine they used last year. There's a lot of new stuff coming out and I don't try very much of it, but uh, you know, over the years I tried a few and and uh, I definitely uh, dug the, the Neotats, just the simplicity of them. So I didn't, I wouldn't say it was because of my style that I switched over to them, but I've definitely switched my setup in the last, you know, five or six years. But, but I think a lot of tattooers have. Yeah. So it's a very uh, interesting time for tattooing. So you're running, you're, you're strictly using rotary yep. based machines? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I've been strictly rotaries for, I don't know, maybe five years or so. I was always kind of interested in them, and but it took me a while to find one that I actually liked, that I could actually, you know, just switch over. Those ones were actually Ben White's ones, Ben White from Love Hate, his rotaries that he was making, I guess it was five or six years ago. Those are the first ones I was like, all right, this is it, this is my new machine. Mm -hmm. I'm a rotary guy, but then after a while I tried a couple others, I tried the Stigma, that was okay. And then uh, tried the Neotats, and I've been using them ever since. Okay. So. Cool. Do you feel it's difficult for you to um, stay on top of being able to push your new patterns that you're that you've been creating, or is that something like you're you're showing them in, in a book form, or you're offering them to the clients that come through to you, and they're they're going for it? Um, I remember there was a time when I had to push all this kind of stuff, like dot work and you know the, the Polynesian stuff. Like it wasn't being done over here at all. I, I picked it up in England, so over here it was completely unheard of. And I remember having to push it on people. But uh, with the new patterns and stuff, it's all—it's it, not too far from what I was doing before. So it's—it's it's not even like it's a transition. It's just instead of the one that I put on them coming from a book, it came from from me or my computer, so I, most people don't even really know where they come from. Yeah. It's not, I don't, it's not even usually discuss it, sometimes, but most people are now, like, they're pretty trustworthy, they're, they know what I do, so they're not picky about, like, what exactly they're going to get anymore, they're, it's like, usually right. a surprise, you know. They know pretty much, like, it's going to be a geometric half sleeve or whatever, for example, mm -hmm. and, you know, maybe they want some of this or that in it, but... I don't always like show them like okay we're gonna use this pattern here and this pattern there and this thing it's a lot of it just happens so so it's cool I don't have to like you know 
push anything on anyone or try and convince them that like, oh no, I made this pattern, but trust me, it's gonna be cool. It's like, right. You know what I always wonder, and especially with a tattooer like you, who, if you look through your portfolio, you're, t you know, for example, right now you're tattooing the, the palm and fingers of, you know, on Gabe, and mm -hmm. that, that's a real challenge for, for even, you know, accomplished tattooers or seasoned tattooers. That's, that's a challenge. Yeah. So, but I see that you, you know, you're, you're tattooing all, all over a client's body. You, you, yeah. you don't, um, which is really impressive as a tattooer. I really think that that's awesome and commend yeah. you for that because I know that at times when it comes, when things, certain things come to me, it's like, you know, there's, there's some apprehension, yeah. but I guess, well, thanks, man. Um, are there areas that you, you don't like tattooing? I mean, I noticed with this, you're like, all right, let's do it. There wasn't even like a um, batting of the eye, but. Uh, what do I not like tattooing? Uh, I'm sure there's spots. Uh, I mean, I like anything on the hand. I've really uh, gotten into the hands in the last few years. I just love doing them. I love the way they look. It's uh, it's definitely a challenge, but I guess I'm into that challenge. I guess you know, it's maybe that's part of what I like about it. Mm -hmm. Trying to have patterns go right across all the gaps in the fingers and still look, you know, uh, as seamless as I can get them. The challenge of that I really like. Um, now, how often do you find you know you do a hand, you do you do that? very thing that you're talking about with the seamless pattern across the fingers yep. how often do you find that that project is going to have to be revisited and if so how many times do you think till you get it to where it's a tattoo that you're not going to have to um think about not usually more than once really yep um that's that's awesome palms are a different story i was thinking more i do a lot more of the backs of hands and the backs of the fingers mm -hmm. and usually with with one touch up some, some of them don't need any touch-ups, but often, especially around the knuckles and stuff like that, a touch-up's not uncommon. But usually one is generally takes care of it. I, I don't think I've ever found that I had to like keep revisiting a hand like over and over. Are you doing anything, um, with the exception of the you know digital pointillism or whatever, are you, uh, do you do other forms of art outside of tattooing? Um, a little bit of painting, not as much as I'd like to, but uh, what else do I do? Yeah, a bit of painting sometimes with liquid acrylics. I did done some oil stuff for a while there. I was watching Bob Ross, so I was like, I'm gonna, I, you watch enough Bob Ross, you're like, I gotta try that. <laughs> I'm gonna do that shit because I was DVRing them all the time. I had like 30 or 40 of them saved, so I started. Yeah, I did a few of those for a while. Landscapes. Yeah, a few of those just to like. That was my first time ever even touching oils. I was like, yeah, fuck, I'm gonna do some of that. Uh, so now, what, of how those. long ago was that? Uh, a couple of years ago, two or three years. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Just because uh, I wanted to, I wanted to try oils. Try your hand at something different. So I'm like, oh, that'll be a good start. Um, yeah, but I don't, I don't do a ton of it. I don't know. I find that tattooing keeps me really busy. Tattooing, making patterns. I'm always making patterns on the computer and stuff. Like, I've got thousands of them. Do you have interest in making, in turning those pan patterns into anything other than a tattoo? Um, yeah, I would if, when the opportunity comes around. Yeah. You know, like uh, there was a company in Canada that got me to make, uh, do a, like they commissioned a piece of artwork and they made laptop bags and uh, iPhone covers out of. Really? And those were, those were super cool. They were rad. Are they still on the market? Uh, they were like a limited edition. They only made, I think, 1,500. So they sold out really quickly, I wow. guess. They were like in, uh, I don't know if you have the same stores up here, but uh, we have a shop, place called Best Buy. Yeah. And uh, Future Shop. Wow. Uh, they were in those all across Canada. So they, I guess they sold out like really quickly. So I have, I have one somewhere. My mom's got one. I have one phone case that I used and it's all crappy and brown now, but that's it. I didn't save any. I should have, but I didn't get any more out of them. Huh. So, yeah, but that was a great project. Corey Ferguson board shorts or something. Yeah, yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah, totally. Yeah, you know, that, that type of artwork can translate to 
anything from clothing, jewelry to laptop cases to whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did a few skateboards. I did one for TNS back when those were the big thing. Uh, yeah, I'm always up for stuff like that. Just Who, uh, you know, tattooers these, these days? Who is? Uh, what do you feel like you're? Are, are, do you look at other tattoo work or are you? Yeah, a lot. Yeah, you yeah. Do. I'm still totally obsessed. Like, like I always was. Like you were saying earlier about being a kid into the magazines and stuff. Like I was the same way, and now I'm, I'm still the same way. But it's I guess now it's more like easier just to do it on Instagram and Facebook. Right. You know. But yeah, still totally. I'm looking at tattooer stuff every day. And do you find yourself drawn to tattooers that are like-minded or similar in their body of work, or are you kind of looking at you know things that are completely different, or or, or all of it? Like where where are you at? Um, with that? Looking at other dot work, yeah. There's a, there's a there's so many dot work tattooers out now. Like there's so many that you know it's not as exciting as it used to be. You know to see one or back when there was like 10 or 12 of them, that was exciting shit. Now there's like a new one every single day on Instagram. But even out of all those, there's a handful that I love. Like I love their work. Some, you know, people that I knew from before, some new people that have cropped up. There's a couple that I've, you know, really dig. Um, I don't know. Uh, but I, there's a lot of people that I, that are not dot work tattooers at all that I really dig. Yeah. Like, yeah. Can you name a couple? Yeah. Um, who am I really digging lately? I mean, Nick Chaboya, he's a really good friend yeah. of mine, but I don't mind saying anything. Like, I, I love his work. The shit that he's doing is it's ridiculous. Like, so good and so inspiring. Um, who else is doing crazy stuff? I love all that trash polka stuff. Uh huh. Um, Buena Vista Tattoo Club and Zoil and that type of stuff. I love that shit a lot. Um, all those are kind of stuff that I can see incorporating into my work a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, some of that, I'm doing a little bit of red here and there. A little probably, bit of red? Is that yeah, a little bit of red and in, in with my black work, just probably because of that trash boat and stuff looks so cool with it, black and red together. Um, yeah, I'd like to do a little bit more stuff where it's a little less rigid and a little bit more of the loose kind of almost cubist -y stuff that, that Nick's doing. Like I could see trying to get some of that loose influence into my own work as well. Um, who else am I really digging lately? Uh, some dot work tattooers. Um, I think it's Alvaro Flores from Australia. His work is really cool. Um, a girl from England called Darren 12. I really dig her stuff a lot. What got you in, uh, you know, 14 years ago when you started tattooing? What got you, what got you into it? What into did, tattooing? Yeah. Um, was there a moment or, or a group of artists or, or, or a, you know, a, a movement of artists that? No, I was already working at the shop for a long time before I started tattooing. Um, I was still in high school when I started working there, so. Even at the time that I started, I wasn't planning on being a tattoo artist at all. Uh, my dad's a tattooer, so I was working at the shop, making needles for the guys there, and uh, working the counter a little bit that first summer. And uh, yeah, it's the only like real job I've ever had was in the shop. So and you said you didn't think you would be a tattooer. Did you have something you thought you you were looking to be, or you at just that time uh, I didn't really know. I was a punk rocker. I didn't really have a lot of plans as far as career goes. I knew I was enjoying playing in my punk band and. I was organizing gigs and doing a fanzine and, you know, being in these like anti-racist groups. I was a pretty, pretty busy punk rocker. It was like a full-time job almost, like organizing <laughs> the shows, playing in a band, touring around a little bit, all this stuff kept me really busy. And working in the shop was like a way to, you know, look how I wanted, not have to get a real job and it still allowed me the time to do all that stuff. But uh, Are you playing music now? No, not at all. Um, let's see, I've been, I was like 17 when I started at the tattoo shop. So I was working there for seven years before I started tattooing. 
So right up until the time I was tattooing professionally full time, I played music and organized gigs right up to that point. And then once I started tattooing as like a full time job and I really got a, like a taste for it and really, you know, felt what it was to do it. And that was it. I never, never played again. I sold my bass, got rid of it. I was, had no interest in it. It was like, it was like tattooing trumped all of that shit. It's like, what am I wasting my time playing music for when I could be doing this, you know? Like, uh, now you said you were working at, at your father's shop? Um, it wasn't his shop, no. Or, or he was, he was working work? there. It was a place called Way Cool Tattoos. So, uh, but so was, you're second generation tattooer? Yep. Was he, what, what was his, was he, was he uh, you know, excited about it or was he like, you need to do something, you should do something else? No, no, he was totally down. I mean, he got me the job.